Now the dual mode cannot cure cancer, cannot make the blind see, and may not likely end, uh, end worldwide hunger. But it certainly is more comfortable than a standard volume ventilation. Also, if there are substantial spontaneous efforts, it tries and gives it at the least amount of pressure and the flow. Let's see this in a way that all of us understand in a graph. Let's try and understand it in a way that we are uh, very comfortable doing as a graph. As I said, if you can see my, uh, my cursor, you have a pressure target. There is a target volume. So you first deliver a breath as a pressure control breath at the lowest spectrum of the pressure that I have set. It monitors the volume. If the, moni if the monitored volume is lower than what is my target volume, then it hikes up the pressure by three centimeters H2O over the next three breaths, continues to monitor the volume till the volume hits 500 ml. At that particular point of time, the machine seals the pressure saying that for this compliance, this is the pressure that will help me deliver 500 mils. And I become a pressure control uh, uh, ventilation in going forward till the compliance changes or the volume increases or drops. If you see here, my target is the volume, but my flow delivery here is actually a decelerating flow. Unlike a conventional volume control ventilation where my flow is a square flow. Here, the flow is actually a decelerating flow, which is a function of a pressure control ventilation. So a volume is being targeted in a flow pattern that is similar to pressure control, and hence it's a dual move. Now, why and where did these early dual modes come from? Now, you have two, uh, across the Atlantic, you have the European companies, you have the American uh, companies. The European companies, uh, Siemens and Draeger, could only deliver a square waveform in a VCB. The American companies, mostly Puritan Bennett and Bird, were able to actually have a way where you could decelerate the flows in VCB. Now, to compete against this, because as soon as you have a decelerating flow waveform, as we have seen in a graphic earlier, the pressure, there is a mild drop in pressure. So the first company to come with a dual mode was Siemens, now Mackey, called the PRVC, Pressure Regulated Volume Constant, where they, they used to start delivering volume in a pressure kind of a waveform. So that is the origin of the dual mode, specifically the a PRVC. Now you have many, many companies who have these dual modes in various names. Now, where all are they actually clinically beneficial? Dual modes are good in neonates where I want to have certain volumes, but pressures are also equally important. Also important in places where synchrony is uh, is uh, is is mandatory because there is an improved synchrony. Although there are no peer-reviewed journals which say that uh, it that there is a decreased sedation by this, but some of the uh, hospitals do claim that the length of stay and sedation due to PRVC is actually lower. Now, what are the limitations of a dual mode? Every mode has its plus and minuses. We have seen the advantages and limitations of volume ventilation and of pressure ventilation. Similarly, we have seen some of the advantages of a dual mode where a volume is targeted, keeping pressures uh, in a certain level. But where does this not work very well? Now, if there is a patient demand change or if there is a compliance change, then the equipment starts to change the pressures again. So in those places, you may have initial dyssynchrony where patients have high demand you may have some increased dyssynchrony. Also, if you see here in spontaneous modes where you have the patient's demands which keep changing. Now, here you have a patient who is, who is now healthier. His demand has gone high. So as, his, as he starts to draw more breath, where he needs more support, actually the pressure starts to drop. 
and unloads the complete work of breathing onto the patient. And this increases the energy cost of breathing for such patients. So when we put a patient on a dual mode, there are certain factors that we have to be very cognizant of. Many a times we hear that these dual modes are ones where you simply put a patient on from intubation to extubation. We have to be careful when such statements are being made. We have to look at what do we have to do for a patient across the patient's improvement journey. And if the mode is not suitable, maybe switch the mode. Now, let me uh, come to the conclusion on the dual mode. All these dual modes, which are like a PRVC, an auto flow, a volume ventilation plus a VAPS, is basically volume ventilation, where the flow and volume stay constant. There is a control over pressure, unlike a pure volume control ventilation, where there is no control over pressure. In this mode, there is a certain control over pressure where you can set a pressure gradient. There is no consensus or any clinical documentation on any effect on outcome. Maybe if the concern is to maintain constant tidal volumes while keeping a control on pressures, this is a good mode. Let's now try and uh, look at, I'm also trying to be cognizant of the time. Uh, these are the various names by which PRVC is known across the industry. Puritan Bennett calls it volume ventilation plus. Siemens, the company that uh, actually came up with it, is it is called a PRVC. Drager calls it an auto flow. YSS calls it a V-Sync. And Hamilton calls it an uh, APV. <laughs>